Hi everyone, I'm Mrs Jennison and I'm an Associate Di Director at the Outward Range Academies Trust. Today's lesson is on reactions of acids and metals. Our challenge is to be able to describe the reactivity of metals using observations. Our aspire is to be able to explain why some metals are more reactive than others. Now, the acids we will be discussing in today's lesson are the common acids that you would use in a lab. So hydrochloric acid, HCl, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and nitric acid, HNO3. It may be worth making sure that you've jotted down those chemical formulae as we will use them in a later slide. Acids take part in reactions in which salts are produced. In those reactions, the hydrogen ions in the acids are replaced by metal ions or ammonium ions. The metal needs to be more reactive than hydrogen in the reactivity series for it to react with an acid. When a metal reacts with an acid, the products are a salt and hydrogen gas. And here's the general word equation for that reaction. An example of this would be the reaction with sulfuric acid and magnesium and that forms magnesium sulfate and hydrogen. Here is the symbol equation for that reaction. And as you can see, the sulfate ion attaches to the magnesium ion from the metal, which means the hydrogen ions from the acid then form hydrogen gas. Now, I'm going to insert a video of an investigation of metals and acid. In that, we will add hydrochloric acid to the four metal seen on the screen. Copper, iron, zinc and magnesium. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to note down any observations that you make for those reactions. This is an experiment to show you the difference in the reactivity of metals with acids. Now, what we have in each of the test tubes is I've got a small sample of magnesium. So this one's magnesium. Then I've got zinc, iron, and then copper. And I'm going to add some acid to each of those metals. Now, because these metals all have different reactivities, we should be able to observe a difference in their reaction with this hydrochloric acid. So we can see that magnesium has quite a violent reaction with the acid, followed by zinc, that was the first of a metal to start bubbling, iron, now there's not a huge difference in the reactivity between these metals. So actually I'd probably have to make some more measurements to compare their reactivity, but we can see that they're both reacting with the acid, whereas the copper, there's only a few very small bubbles of gas forming, so copper's not very reactive with acid. Now, I would like to show you what gas is being formed. Because the gas is colourless, I have to perform an extra test to identify that gas. So I'm going to place a lit splint in the test tube with magnesium, and if I hear a popping sound, that gas, will be hydrogen. So now, if I place this in the test tube, you can hear a popping sound. So the gas being produced when a metal reacts with acid is hydrogen. Now I'll give you a little bit more time to complete those observations. Once you've done so, I'd like you to suggest which metal was the most reactive and explain your choice using your observations. I'd also like you to suggest which metal was the least reactive. And again, I'd like you to explain your choice using your observations.
So I've written just a few observations that you may have for the metals that we use. Um, copper, there, there was possibly one bubble. There was very few, no bubbles, I would probably say, would be a better observation. For the iron and zinc, there was actually quite a lot of bubbles. The zinc did start reacting a little bit quicker, but once the iron got going, there was as many bubbles for iron as zinc. So actually, we'd probably need to take other measurements to see which one of those was the most reactive. Magnesium, there was a lot of bubbles. Um, you could technically call it effervescence because it was constantly bubbling. Now, based on those observations, magnesium was the most reactive because we observed more bubbles of hydrogen gas. The least reactive metal was copper because we observed no bubbles of hydrogen gas. A question I commonly get asked by students is, why is chloride chloride? And why is sulfate sulfate? Why id or it? Now to answer that question, we need to look at the chemical formula. You can see that in sulfuric and nitric acid, there is oxygen present. Hydrochloric does not contain oxygen atoms. So it implies oxygen in the formula of that salt. Whereas id is just the non-metal, so it's just chloride ion. So using what we have just looked at, I'd like you to complete word equations for the reactions below. So, when sodium reacts with chloric acid, sodium chloride and hydrogen gas is formed. Iron and hydrochloric acid would form iron chloride and hydrogen. Magnesium and sulfuric acid will make magnesium sulfate and hydrogen. So what about the chemical formula of salts? Remember that when we are writing chemical formulae of salts, we need to use the charges on the ions inside of the salt. Remember the rules. Metal ions are always positive. Non-metal ions are always negative. For an element in a numbered group on the periodic table, they will always form the same ions. For example, group three will form plus three ions whereas group six will form minus two ions. The overall charge on a compound is zero, so the positive and negative charges must be equal overall. And there are some other useful ions for you to know, and these are the compound ions, hydroxide, sulfate, carbonate, nitrate, ammonium, and hydrogen carbonate. So let's have a look at an example. Aluminium chloride. Aluminium is a three plus ion. It's in group three. So to cancel out that three plus charge, we would require three negative chloride ions. 
and three ions will attract to each aluminium ion. Remember, this will form a giant lattice, but within that giant lattice, there will be three times more chloride ions than there is aluminium ions to balance that charge. So the formula of aluminium chloride would be AlCl3. Three chloride ions would be needed to balance the charge of the aluminium ion. So let's have a look at another example, sodium sulphate. Sodium has a plus one charge because it's in group one. Sulphate has a minus two charge, which is why sulfuric acid is H2SO4. So two sodium ions will be needed to cancel out that minus two charge. So the chemical formula of sodium sulphate would be Na2SO4 because two sodium ions are needed to balance that minus two charge. Now I'd like you to have a go at writing word equations and if you can, symbol equations for each of the following reactions. So for the reaction of lithium with sulfuric acid, lithium plus sulfuric acid will make lithium sulfate plus hydrogen. The formula of lithium sulfate will be Li2SO4. And to balance it, you'd need to place a two in front of the lithium. For sodium and hydrochloric acid, we will form sodium chloride and hydrogen. And as you can see, the symbol equation is on the screen. For magnesium and nitric acid, magnesium plus nitric acid makes magnesium nitrates and hydrogen. Now for this one, because the nitrate ion, you need two of them to balance out the two plus charge on the magnesium. We actually place the formula of that ion in brackets and then place a two outside of it, saying that we have two of that nitrate ion in that chemical formula. So, as we saw earlier, there is some differences in the ways that these metals react with acid. Now, I used magnesium, zinc, iron and copper earlier, and actually zinc's more reactive than iron. So we should have seen more bubbles, but it could just be due to the fact that I used iron powder and I didn't use zinc powder. I would never use sodium with acid because it would be too violent of a reaction because sodium is more reactive than magnesium. 
But the question here is why did copper not react? And it's due to the reactivity series. You may remember from a previous lesson that we place two non-metals into this reactivity series, carbon and hydrogen, and we place them there for comparison reasons. Now, the reactivity series depends on the ease at which they lose electrons to form positive ions. So the metals at the top of the reactivity series lose their electrons very easily. Group one only need to lose one electron, which is why they lose that electron easily. And that's why they are the most reactive. The metals that are lower in reactivity than hydrogen tend to be unreactive with acids. And it's because a successful acid and metal reaction is actually a displacement reaction. So here, if we look at the word equation, we can see that essentially the magnesium is swapping places with the hydrogen in the acid. And you can see it even easier when you look at the symbol equations. We call that displacing. So the magnesium has displaced the hydrogen from the sulfuric acid. Hydrogen is not a metal. I'd like you to explain why hydrogen is placed into the reactivity series. So, hydrogen is placed there for comparison. Any metal more reactive than hydrogen will react with acids as it will displace the hydrogen from the acid. You could have also said that any metal less reactive than hydrogen will not react with acids. Now, using that, we're going to have a go at answering an exam question. A student was trying to produce hydrogen gas. And figure one shows the apparatus she used. So she's got dilute hydrochloric acid and copper and she's collecting gas using that delivery tube. No gas was produced. The teacher suggested that this was because the substances in the flask did not react. They want you to suggest why those substances did not react. And then they'd ask you, They'd like to ask you which two substances could the student have placed in the flask to produce hydrogen safely and they want you to choose one of those options.
So, copper is less reactive than hydrogen, or you could have said that copper is unreactive. The substances that you would have chosen to react more safely are zinc and dilute hydrochloric acid. You would not have taken the potassium option, as that is not a safe reaction. Now, we're just going to have a look at oxidation and reduction in these reactions. Oxidation can be the gain of, gain of oxygen by a substance. For example, magnesium is oxidised when it reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. That can also be represented by the symbol equation on the screen. Reduction can be the loss of oxygen from a substance. For example, copper oxide can be reduced to form copper if it is reacted with hydrogen. And that can also be shown using the symbol equation on the screen. But there's another definition for oxidation and reduction, and that's in terms of electrons. Oxidation is also the loss of electrons, and reduction is the gain of electrons. Now, I like to use the acronym LEO says GER. Lose electrons, oxidation. Gain electrons, reduction. So an example of this, nitric acid reacts with zinc to form zinc nitrate and hydrogen. And I've shown this on the screen here. The zinc atoms have lost electrons to form their ions and form zinc nitrate. This means that the zinc has been oxidized. The hydrogen ions have gained electrons to form hydrogen gas. This means that the hydrogen has been reduced. So I'd like you to use the equation on the screen to identify which species has been oxidised and explain your answer and which species has been reduced and explain your answer for that also. So the magnesium was oxidised because the atoms have lost electrons to become magnesium ions. And I've just written a half equation to represent that. So magnesium forms magnesium 2 plus plus the two electrons. Now those electrons are actually then gained by the hydrogen, which means the hydrogen is reduced because the hydrogen ions have gained those electrons to become hydrogen atoms. And again, I've written a half equation here for you to see that. So two hydrogen ions gain two electrons and form H2. Now that's everything for this video and I will see you soon.